aquí sí se me hace mi tita. Ah, ah, yes, that's better. Fresh air again. <laughs> ah, nice deep breath. What a lovely day to have a look around. Oh, oh, hello there. <laughs> hey, what's going on over there? Goodness me, look at that boy huffing and puffing. You see him? Why on earth is he breathing so hard? Oh, oh I see. Ah, yes. It's because he's riding a bicycle. Yeah, observant, aren't I? <laughs> well, that looks jolly hard work to me. Now, do you know what he is breathing? Yes, of course. That's right. It's air. The air that is all around us. Now, of course, we can't see air. It's invisible, but we know it's there. Oh, yes, we do. For a start, you can feel it when the wind blows in your face. Nice, fresh air. Everybody likes it and everybody needs it. But when we take exercise, our, our bodies need more air than normal, you see. That's why we... Why we huff and we puff and we and we pant. Oh dear. Now of course, we're not the only ones who breathe. People and moles, I mean. No, no, no. Animals need to breathe too. Now, take dogs, for instance. That's a dog. Oh, you knew that. Well, look at him. Panting away. Oh, he stopped. No, he's off again. Look, oh, pant, pant, pant. Now dogs pant much more than most animals. They use the air to cool their bodies down when they get too hot. And they do get too hot. And so would you, if you had a thick, hairy coat like that one. <laughs> oh, and birds, too. They need to breathe as well. Mm. Little birds, like these budgies, they breathe in and out much, much faster than we do. Yeah. When they're resting, they breathe about 50 times in one minute. But after they've been flying around, they breathe in and out more than 200 times in one minute. And that is fast. And insects, yep, they need to breathe as well. Oh, yes. But insects don't breathe in quite the same way as other animals. Instead of breathing through their mouth or nose, they breathe through lots of tiny little holes all over their bodies. And you didn't know that, did you? Some creatures that live in the water, like otters, they have to breathe air as well. Even whales have to come up to breathe. Look at the enormous breaths that they take. Do you know, this is an interesting fact, that some whales can hold their breath underwater for more than one hour. On a windy day like this, you can actually see the way the air is moving by watching the way it blows things around. But how exactly does the air do that? And have you ever wondered what air is made of? Well, I shall attempt to explain. <coughs> now, here, have a look at this. Now, as you... Second thoughts, don't have a look at that. <coughs> have a look at this. Now, imagine that you could look very closely at air. No, 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 much closer than that. Come on, closer, closer, closer. Closer still, even closer. Right, yeah, that's better. Now, the air is full of tiny bits of dust. They are so teeny-weeny, we can hardly see them. But pieces of dust are still much bigger than pieces of air. The air itself is a mixture of even tinier things, and they're called 
gas particles. Got that? Gas particles. Now, if all these gas particles move in one direction, they push against anything in their way. And that is all the wind is. It's just moving air. The power of the wind is being used to push the sails of this windmill round. Now, here's a thought. All those tiny pieces of moving air must weigh something, mustn't they? Otherwise, they couldn't push the sails round, could they? So, even though we can't see it, air must weigh something. Mm -hmm. Yes, sounds very, very strange, doesn't it? But, strange though it is, it's true. <laughs> and air can weigh quite a lot, actually. You and I don't notice the weight of the air because our muscles are strong enough to stand up against it. But there's a lot of air up above us, pressing us down. That pressing force is called air pressure. You see, pressio, pressure, same sort of word really. Air pressure is heaviest near the ground, where we are, because all those tiny particles of gas are pushed close together by the air up above them. But way up higher, the air is more spread out. So there, the air pressure is less. Do you know why we breathe the air? Well, it's because our bodies need the gases in the air to live. When we breathe in, those little particles of air gases go into our lungs, and then they go from there to everywhere else in our bodies. And that keeps us working properly. But then we breathe out, and out go all the gases that we don't need anymore. But when these particles in the air are far apart, the air feels hard to breathe. And that's what happens in the highest places in the world. a mountain, the more difficult it gets to breathe, because the air gets more spread out and thin. Oh dear, oh dear. It looks like hard work, doesn't it? Mm, I don't think I'd fancy doing that. Not with my little legs and my little paws digging away. There's a long way to go yet. The air near the tops of the mountains is even more spread out, and it is so thin that mountain climbers have to take extra air with them, and they take it in tanks. <laughs> A triumph! And there are other places where people have to take their own air because there just isn't any at all. Like down underwater, where we find this clever little fellow jiggling away. <laughs> Oh, in fact, he's not that little, actually. Anyway, he's a water spider, and water spiders carry little bubbles of air about with them so they can breathe underwater. Now, isn't that clever? But unfortunately, we can't do it that way. So, how do we get air into our diving tanks? Well, the air is squashed by a special machine. Oi, 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 oi. Look, 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 I said the air squash, not me. No, I'm little enough as it is. <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! It's the same way air is forced into a balloon. And when it's time to use it, you make an opening in the container and it comes out. <laughs> what, you may ask, makes a balloon go bang? Go on, ask. Ah, well, I'll tell you what makes a balloon go bang. It's the sound all that squashed up air makes as it rushes out at once. <laughs> Air can do a 
other things, it can fill up the falling parachute. Gravity, which makes everything fall toward the Earth, pulls the parachute down. But the air fills up the parachute and pushes it upward. So the parachute falls slowly to the ground. Have you ever flown a kite? I'm sure you have. A bit of fun, actually, isn't it? Anyway, if you have flown a kite, then you have felt the way that air can push something up and away from the ground. In the same way, moving air, the wind, can also fill a boat's sails. You set your sail, and the wind comes from behind and pushes you along. It's all a lot easier than rowing. <laughs> and when you want to go another way, you just change the way your sails are set. Ahoy there, me hearties! Ho ho ho! Splice the land lubbers! Oh, a life in the ocean way! But where does the wind come from? Uh -huh. Well, look at this first. Watch this kettle boil. See how the steam rises from the kettle. Now, that happens because steam is very hot. Steam is a mixture of very hot air and water. So, hot air rises. And the same kind of thing happens when the sun shines on the ground and warms it up. During the day, the sun's rays shine on the ground and warm it up. Yes, well, yes, and I, I know they look a bit like rain, but actually they're meant to be the sun's rays. It's the best we could do. Yes, 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 I know, I know. What's all this got to do with the wind, you're probably asking? You were, weren't you? Well, hang on a minute, just hang on, because I'm trying to explain. So, after the ground has been warmed up, it then heats up the air, and then the warm air near the ground starts to rise. and cooler, heavier air sinks down to take its place. And that is how the wind is made. So, since hot air rises, when you fill a great big balloon, like this one, with enough hot air, it goes up. That's right. Can you see the burners? Of course you can. That's it. That burny thing, which is burning. Yeah, well, it's heating up the air inside the balloon. Once balloons are up in the air, they are blown along by the wind. And if the pilot wants to go up, what does he do? He heats up the air inside the balloon. And when the air in the balloon cools down, it gets heavier, and the balloon sinks back down to the ground again. sinks down pretty quickly because it is heavy and the smoky air in this glass is very very cold so it's very very heavy and that's where weather comes from see all those little lines you see on a weather map just show you where there are big masses of warm air and cool air running into one another and pushing each other around Warm 
warm air rising usually means nice weather. Cool air sinking often means it's going to be cloudy. And when warm and cool air run into one another too quickly, there can be problems. Oh dear, like hurricanes, where warm and cool air whirl around and around each other and make a big storm. Tornadoes! See the air whirling again? Oh, like a, like a great big rainstorm with thunder and lightning! <laughs> now, personally, I don't care much for weather like that. Oh! Where did that come from? <laughs> They're making paper darts! My word, look at that one go. Woo! Now, little test. Can you think of something else that flies like a paper dart? Hmm? Come on. It's almost like a giant paper dart. Right, a hang glider. Now, they fly on the flows or currents of air up in the sky. don't have any engines to help them do it either. In fact, they fly rather like the way birds do. They use their wings to ride on the warm air currents. Those currents are called thermals, and they rise up into the sky. Birds are very light, so that it's easier for the air to hold them up. And they've got hollow bones that are filled with air. Birds have another advantage over people in hang gliders. They can use the muscles in their wings to help them fly. And some of them, especially little tiny birds, can move their wings very quickly indeed and move oh, very fast. Now, of course, there are more things that fly through the air than birds and hang gliders. There's all kinds of aeroplanes that fly too. Some of them do it the same way the birds do just using the wind. This glider needs help to get up into the air. But once it's there, it can soar just like an eagle. have an advantage. They have engines to push them through the air. The engines have to work very, very hard, but they're rather like the strong muscles that a bird uses to flap its wings. 
they're not quite the same, of course, because aeroplanes can't flap their wings. I mean, like this Concorde, its engines have to suck in air and then push it out behind. And that way, planes can take off, fly and land as safely as the birds. It's funny, we don't really think about air very much, do we? But where would we be without it? Oh dear! No, no, stop that! Come back! Come back! Come back! Come back here! Ha! Come here! Okay. <laughs> oh, we look. Oh, my hat's all dirty now. It's going to need a wash. And have some water. 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 Ah, uh -huh. that reminds me. Now, water is another story. I shall tell it to you some other time. So join me, please. Bye bye. telling you about all sorts of other things. We will go to the seaside, that'll be good. And we shall have a look where rain comes from, which won't be quite so good. <laughs> and see what happens to water when it gets very cold or very hot. And 
do you know why some things float and others sink? I bet you don't, but I'm going to tell you. And there's another one. How does water reach the tap? There's so much to find out about water. And I'm going to tell you everything. Well, nearly everything. In another story, which is all about light, I will be talking to you about things like the sun. Now, do you know why plants need sunlight? Hmm? And do you know where the sun goes at night? <laughs> Trick question, that one. And what about the moon and the stars? Well, we're going to have a look at them too. And we'll be talking about lots of other things like rainbows and mirrors. So, please join me, otherwise I'll get lonely. <laughs> 